Hello folks and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about the John Deere X728. Stick around. Well, this particular one I happen to have is a X728 Ultimate Special Edition. It's a 2012 model. Bought it the uh, year before last. Uh, it's used. It had 150 hours. And it did, you know, like I said, it was a 2012 and I just got it in 2018. So that ain't many hours. The guy, old man had bought it and he'd sold it back to the lot. He'd bought it from the story I got. Anyway, what you got on this one. Uh, we'll look at the engine and stuff here in just a minute. It's got the 27 horsepower Kawasaki, but we'll get to that uh, Special edition from what I found what the salesman told us consists of the little front fenders the bush guard The pinstriped wheels if you're into that the better seat with the lumbar Adjustments and all that the selectable in and out four-wheel drive uh, I looked at Kubota's and stuff before I bought this before I when I was just shopping around, it, uh, I didn't like the way the new Kubotas worked with the uh, some kind of an odd system, a cable system on it or something. I'd rather have this lever, selectable in and out, and you're done. This particular one has a 48-inch deck. You could buy these with a 48, a 52, and a 60, if I'm not mistaken, when they were new. Uh, I need a 48-inch for the yards that I mow and stuff. You just can't, can't get around. I went from a 42-inch John Deere 125, a... Uh, one like you'd pick up at Lowe's. I went up to this one, so 48 inch at, you know, a lot more mowing there. What you got also is you got the front hydraulic hookups. Um, controlled by these levers, which also, this top lever here raises the deck up and down. All hydraulic, all hydrostatic. Uh, like I said, adjustable uh, lumbar seat. Um, hang on just a second here, let me raise the hood. And while I'm in the process of raising the hood, you got the bush guard that came on this thing as part of the special edition. Get a hold of this lever, raise it up, tilt that forward. Now that doesn't go any further down. It doesn't work like one of the old um, uh, little carriers, like on the front of the 110s and 140s and what have you. It don't uh, it don't go any further than that. So let's <clears throat> raise the hood. Like I said, this one has the liquid cooled 27 horsepower Kawasaki engine. Uh, great engine so far. It's the first one of those I've ever owned. Uh, plenty of power. Uh, I was kind of looking at, a, if I was buying a new one, I might have went with a diesel. But when I found this one, 48 inch deck and everything I was looking for, you know, I wouldn't like, I'm looking no further. This, this is it. So, um, fuel gauge, everything you'd expect up here for one of these type tractors. Like I said, hour wise we're up to looks like 262 if i can get that where you can see anyway 262 hours not hurt at all uh you get a machine like this you need to try to take care of it it's there are a lot of money when you buy them new i mean mine's no more special than anybody else's out there that's been bought but you know a lot of money in these things like i said just got through cleaning it up first bath of the year uh do an oil change. I went the other day to our local tractor dealer and got the oil, the filter, everything I need, and a set of blades for it. This one does have the mulching kit. Now, not the mulching blades. Hadn't never fooled with one of these before. It's got the plastic insert, which can be removed if you want it. And you can put a regular set of uh, mulching blades on this deck. But these blades are, if it makes any sense to you, mulching blades for the mulching kit that's under there. I don't know. I just went to the dealer, told them what I had and it's the same blade it's under it. everything works great um of course when you get up to this class of engine uh liquid cooled and all that this size it's got a screw on oil filter i know a lot of your colors a lot of your brigs has run for years without those i like oil filter screw on oil filter um pretty well a standard now on your vanguards your Kohler commander series and stuff i mean it just gives so many more hours so much more life to the engine when you can main, properly maintain them change the oil which on my others it didn't have the screw on filter i changed them also 
change the uh, oil on a regular basis, but still, I just I feel much better having one with a filter. Like I say, the four-way hydraulics, let's talk about those for just a minute. I don't have any attachments whatsoever for this thing. Uh, it's my understanding that from when these first come out up till the 2008 models, maybe, they made a loader, front-end loader and stuff that would go on these. Uh, this model here will not accept a front-end loader from what I can read and what I can find out on the internet. They must have changed the frames or whatever. When they went up to the compact utility tractors and gave those options, they took the loaders and stuff up to those, but... As you can tell, the frame is plenty heavy enough, but, you know, don't really need a loader on this size tractor anyway, because unless you was doing a specific job, you know, yard work, uh, mulching type deal, had a commercial job or something. I do, however, for my old 140, I have a uh, blade that goes on the front. Now, I'd have to remove the bumper, but I'm thinking about making me a bracket. I got some friends with a uh, CNC plasma cutter drawn up and making me a bracket to where I could actually mount my blade on the front of this. And you know, I'd have to make some jumper hoses to go from it back to here. But that wouldn't be a problem where I could actually put the blade on the front of this thing. Of course, drop the deck out. These decks are real easy to remove. Um, if you can see it under there, they are shaft driven. So, you know, pull a few pins here and there. Take the deck out. Everything is so simple on these mowers. It's made to be removed, made to be used. Just a second, we're gonna get a startup going. Okay, a little bit about the controls. Right down there is your uh, deferential lock. Um, steep ground, whatever, where four wheel drive, you need just a little more than four wheel drive. When you're stopped, never ever engage a deferential lock. Anyway, you set that on the desired height. When you uh, raise and lower this lever, it's going to only go down to where you have it set. you got the uh, tilt wheel option. Gets you a little more comfortable when you're driving. There's your light switch for anybody that feels the need they got to mow at night. Throttle. This right here, when you want to engage the blades when you're stopped or going as long as you're not in reverse. Pull up, the blades on engage. Down is off, simple. Uh, reverse and forward, nothing new there. Let me get park brake. Standard, just standard stuff. I mean, you know, just thought I'd show you those while we're at it. All right, we're gonna get a start up here. Let's see. Get everything going. Mash that in. A little bit of throttle. And give it just a second. Idles down smooth. Horrible glare. Of course, it's been shut off where I've been cleaning it and everything. Just filled it up with fuel a while ago when I got done mowing before I come home. I went to my son's house and done some mowing. Uh, it runs up when you're running, get it operated. It runs up to about right here. It stays there. I mowed for three hours with it today, up and downhill. It never moves. Go ahead and give it a throttle up. As far as the turning radius, as you can tell, this thing will turn and it'll go right around and around in a circle. So it, it uh, the turning radius is great with that hydraulic steering. Like I said, the little fenders on there, that's just part of this package and the stripes on the wheel, but hey, that's it's, uh, it's what it is, I guess. Said to engage your blades. We'll go ahead and give it a little more throttle. And all in all, 
between zero to 10, I'd have to give this machine at least a nine. There's a thing or two that it could use. Could have been made a little different on the John Deere's part. And I haven't looked at a 2018, 19, or 20 model. Uh, well, I looked at the 18s back whenever they, they were brand new when I went and trying to decide what I was going to buy. But I bought this 12 model instead. So I haven't been around none of the brand fired new ones like the 19s or 20s. They may have changed a few things. Uh, after I bought this, I seen no need to keep shopping. So I haven't been back and looked at them. A couple of little things I have. I won't go into them because I'm not going to throw off on a tractor because actually it works excellent. Uh, I've got all kinds of steep ground now. They are a little top heavy feeling. I mean, you're setting pretty, pretty high off the ground. I've not got a tape measure to tell you how high that seat is, but you're setting pretty high off the ground and it doesn't feel plum comfortable when you're going at a pretty steep incline. That's the reason I always go up and down them instead of out the side of them. Now, I didn't add fluid to the tires. My plan was when I got it to go ahead and add fluid, get the uh, center of gravity that much lower, put more weight down close to the ground. But to be honest, if I do anything uh, with all these mounting options, now I'm not, you can put lift arms on these. I just haven't, haven't done it. We've got some trailers and things around here on the farm. I have pulled a trailer with it a few times, but to be honest, stick a hitch ball in that hole and it's pretty dang low. Your trailer's angled down. So with all those mounting hole options, um, what I think I'm gonna do is go ahead and make me a bracket to go from side to side and bolt in and put one of those receiver hitch, um, little small ones you can buy to where I can stick a receiver for a two inch ball or whatever, two and five sixteenths, depending which trailer I wanna move, where it'll be up higher, closer to a normal um, height of like a bumper of a pickup or whatever, whatever. So, you know, this, this is good for a yard trailer and little things, but it's just too doggone low for, you know, a regular trailer. But anyway, that's, that's one little, but that, that's neither here nor there. Cause if you put a set of lift arms, like a lot of people does, or some of them in the showroom back at that time, they done had the lift arms installed. Well, then you can use a, uh, three point type setup and you've got all you need. You, you can raise it up to the height and everything's good, but this one don't have it. So may put the arms on it may buy the kit may not i don't know that's a lot of money now you've seen the sticker right there the tri-county companies that's where i bought this thing they sold it brand new they bought it back there's their information um you get to where you can see it great people to deal with uh look them up that's so uh, that's about two hours two and a half hours from where i'm at so that's who happened to have it i went down there couldn't ask for better service great place to deal with give them a give them a look um Richie Tractor in Knoxville, Tennessee is actually closer to where I'm at, but you know, they didn't happen to have this machine when I bought it, so that's where I went. Anyway, just want to show you all, I never had done a video on the X728. There it is, uh, comments, questions. I'll uh, be happy to try to answer any questions you have. Like I say, I've used this thing since um, late, mid to late 2018s when I bought it. So, you know, I've got that much time till now. This is, uh, may 2020 so if you liked the video if you found it helpful please like share subscribe like i say i'll try to answer any questions you have have a great day god bless